Roads can take you somewhere new and special, and sometimes back in time, to the bones of maritime history, and where beacons still bring sailors home. We take one of these roads, and you can join us for What's Up Down Under on the York. It's time to see this land, this land of wonder. It's time to go and see what's up down under. What's up down under. G'day and welcome to the show. Today is the last part of our three-part journey through the York Peninsula and it's all been thanks to our good mates at the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia. We have had such a good time here and it's been all thanks to our hosts Kylie and Tom from the Marion Bay Caravan Park. But it's time to hit the road to Port Vincent. And we're going to catch up with a few more of the association members when we get there. So why don't you come with us as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. As you do on travel shows, we were back on the road driving through the lush agricultural area of the York Peninsula. From Innes National Park, it was just over an hour to Port Vincent, our next destination, and another chance to explore my top three choices, seafood, military history and wine. So after a lovely drive through the countryside once again, we ended up at Port Vincent and then we checked into the Caravan Park, which is another uh, family park, so you know it's always going to be good when it's family parks. Not only was it a member of family parks, the Port Vincent Foreshore Caravan Park was right on the beach. Perfect for fishermen and anyone looking for a relaxing holiday right on the water. It's also where Angie caught up with another association member from Eagle Trailers and Campers. Well, hello there, stranger. Hello, Angie. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Good, good. You're, You're settling in nicely. Good to see you again. You turn on the weather for us? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's... What's this little beauty you've brought behind us? Uh, this is the newest addition to our fleet, the uh, Cherokee Light, aimed at the small SUV market, so that it's a much lighter van and can be towed around by smaller vehicles. Now, being an association member, what, what would you say the benefits are? I think the main benefit is you're getting a lot of feedback between the members, getting new information on product developments, having a controlling body there, looking after the products that are produced, so we get a quality product. Thank you so much for showing us this magnificent part of the world. What do you suggest we do while we're here? Take a walk down the main street, Port Vincent, a lot of history, and I think you'll enjoy a stroll down there. I think I might. If you'd like to know more about Eagle Trailers and Campers or any other association members, log on to caravanandcampingsa.com.au. On Wayne's suggestion, Macca and I took a stroll through Port Vincent. It's a cute little town, not a whole lot to it, but a lovely little main street where you can get a great coffee and the uh, standard beautiful pub that you can get a great meal. Port Vincent's just this beautiful little seaside village. Everything's in its place, there's no rubbish laying around. You can see that there's a lot of community pride there. It's only a little community, but everyone knows each other. You know? It's just like it's, it's straight out of that little film about a, a beachside place if someone goes there for a holiday. It's made for your holiday. The architecture there is just so beachy. Smiling faces everywhere, everyone saying g'day. Just a top spot. Coming up after the break, our host at the Port Vincent Foreshore Caravan Park shows us how to rake crabs and cook them, Port Vincent style. Then Angie and I get some work experience on an oyster barge and learn a thing or two from Captain Steve. What's up down under? This family park is all about being on the water, which you can experience even if you don't own a boat. At reception, you can hire all kinds of watercraft and launch them from the beach just metres away. Our host Shane has offered to go out there this afternoon and carry out what is one of the local traditions here. It's called raking crabs. He reckons he'll get us a feed in nothing flat and I am prepared to stand here and watch him in that cold water collecting crabs for dinner. He's all set up, he's got a, a fish tub on wheels so it floats in the ocean behind him, attached to him with a piece of rope. He's got his rake, he starts just scraping the bottom of the sand and he's pulling these crabs out, throwing them in his little bucket behind him and when he's got enough for a feed, he comes back in. Right, so once you've raked up your swimmer crabs, you can twist Shane's arm to <laughs> cook them up for you. Now Shane, I'm going to leave you to it and we're going to check out a slightly more commercial operation at Pacific Estate Oysters. 
What I love so much about caravanning and traveling around with the show is that you, you end up doing things that you just wouldn't expect to do in your normal life. So today we got to experience decking on an oyster boat. So that's something I never dreamed of doing. What have you got me into this time, Angie? What have I got myself into? <laughs> I feel like I'm heading out to some sort of an obscure adult party. I happen to think you look very cute, actually. <laughs> or maybe I should try one of those parties one night. <laughs> well, Maka, we are going to be deck hands for the day. We're going to have to get our hands dirty, we're going to have to get a bit wet, and we're going out with Pacific Estate Oysters with Steve and Jerry. I can't wait. Well, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Fresh oysters, that's what you should expect. Steve and Jerry, what an operation. If you're ever here, you've got to go out and check it out. They're just the happiest people. Great little setup. They take you out there, you do this thing called decky for a day. So they rig you up, you don't need to bring anything with you, they got all the gear. And next thing you're out there, you're dropping the anchor for them. How do they go, boss? Well done. We're out there in these hilarious waders. I don't know who looked funnier, Macca or I. <laughs> but we're out there helping um, shuck the oysters, learning how to shuck them properly and get them from their cages and, and taste them out on the water, fresh out of the sea. All right, so Jerry's got a bit of lemon. Got to have a little bit of lemon. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, Jerry will get the whole thing happening. When they come straight out of that shell, they left the water 20 seconds earlier and then they're in your mouth. One, two, oh, yeah. Three. Oh, I'm an oyster man now. Don't worry about that. Mm. Now, wow. <laughs> you've got to get past the salt Do it. flavor. I mean, it's a bit like drinking spirits or wine, you know. And it's it's really fresh, beer. isn't it? You get well, past they don't get that. much more fresh than that, do they? That is incredible. This is a must do experience, yeah, well, so I recommend. Oh, what do you want me to just hold the shelf? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about what, that. What am I, your handbag? Yeah. Look at you. Put them in there. Steve gave us a look at another York Peninsula delicacy, but we were here for oysters. So it's his lucky day. We'll throw him back. Then it was time to return to our normal jobs of television presenting. The beauty of caravanning is that you can get out into this big, beautiful country and experience things that you'd never dream of, such as joining the guys at Pacific Estate Oysters, jumping in the water, shucking your own oysters and eating them on the job. Steve and Jerry didn't even give us the sack for eating all day at work. <laughs> and if you reckon you want the world to be your oyster, check out what Ali's got to show you from Windsor Caravans. Cheers. Cheers. With summer approaching, there's no better time to check out the latest from Windsor. The Silhouette XC is a beast of a caravan. The Silhouette XC is a tough and fully specced up off-road camper that provides both the indoor comforts of an on-road van with the convenience and go-anywhere towability of an off-road camper. Aside from the obvious, amazing bright red colours, it's got off-road ATV tyres, dual gas bottle with lockable slider, one-piece roof, heaps of storage, and this new wind-up mechanism with no annoying cables or boat winch to deal with. Inside, there's a lot to love, with two generous-sized double beds that slide out conveniently, plus the feature of the slide-out kitchen. This pop-top really does have a lot of space. Not to forget the 90-litre fridge the modern dining area. This whole ensemble has a contemporary feel that you can really set your watch to. If you're looking for a caravan that's rugged on the outside but generously spacious on the inside, then the Silhouette XC might be just for you. For more information, go to windsorcaravans.com.au. Although we weren't travelling in a caravan this journey, we were lucky because the Port Vincent Foreshore Caravan Park is a member of the Family Parks Group. Along with great sites for your caravan or RV, the cabins are always at the highest standard and you know you're going to have a great holiday. It's set right on the water and our cabins are overlooking this really pretty scene. Pelicans everywhere. And I just thought, oh, am I on holidays or am I actually working? <laughs> and it's just like the exclamation mark at the end of the beachside town. There it is. You've got your campsites right on the waterfront. There's not a lot of places you can do that anymore. Along with the traditional, the park offers some unique style dwellings, perfect for a romantic getaway. All the amenities are large, clean and easily accessible. For families, there's plenty of room for the kids and plenty of things to do. What? I didn't know what I was doing. 
<laughs> to help plan your next affordable holiday anywhere in Australia, just log on to familyparks.com.au and you'll find stacks of information and a list of family parks to choose from. Another bonus of this park is they're accredited by the National Association. Here's Angie to tell you why you should always look for the RV map key. When choosing caravan holiday park accommodation for your next camping trip, always keep an eye out for this, the accredited key logo. The accredited key means this caravan holiday park has complied with certain standards, including legal compliance, environmental management, customer service, risk management and maintenance. The accredited key means you benefit from the park's commitment to providing quality service, adhering to stringent security and safety measures, having procedures in place for regular cleaning, maintenance and repairs, and has implemented procedures to minimise risk with emergency and evacuation procedures in place. Accredited Caravan Holiday Parks are committed to providing a positive customer and holiday experience. Thanks so much, Ellen and Justin. See you next time. To access a list of accredited caravan holiday parks, visit letsgocaravanandcamping.com.au. Still ahead on the show, we visit one of the York Peninsula's finest vineyards. And coming up after the break, we meet a fair dinkum hero who is keeping Australia's military history alive in a big way. What's up down under? This episode is made possible by our partners at the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia. To plan your next holiday in South Australia, just log on to caravanandcampingsa.com.au. We are loving it here in Port Vincent and we can't thank the association members enough for showing us around. Earlier, Macca caught up with the CEO of the association, David Duncan. We are lucky enough on this trip to have David Duncan with us. Now, David is the CEO of the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia. David, welcome along, mate. It's been good to see you. Thank you. Great to be here, I have to say, again. Mate, must be the most, best job in the world, working in the industry. Absolutely. What's your favourite part? Favourite part? Dealing with the people, the members. I think it's terrific and, uh, and getting on with the, the job of uh, working in the best interests of our association. So, David, how's the industry going down here in South Australia? I can't believe the industry's in pretty good shape. I mean, we, uh, we run a lot of consumer shows, uh, as our, our sister organisations do around the country, and uh, we've just come off a, a very successful show in July uh, this year, and uh, looking forward to our next show in, uh, in February. What do you think it is about the lifestyle of RVing and caravanning and camping that just keeps drawing people in? I think it's the escapism and, uh, you know, it's, getting away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life, you know, working and so on and so forth, and enjoying the freedom that uh, caravan and camping offers. It's, uh, it's, it's a great, uh, great industry and a, a great pastime. Absolutely, couldn't agree with you more on that one. And if you'd like any more information about the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia, just go to caravanandcampingsa.com.au and you'll find everything you need to know. We've met many characters on What's Up Down Under and then we came across Chris Saw, a unique individual doing it his way on the York Peninsula. We went to this military museum, which was, it felt like it was in, absolutely in the middle of nowhere, no signage, nothing, and it turns out to be the biggest military museum in the country. To turn up out there, I didn't know what I was going to expect, but wow, I mean, and wow is the right word. You know, Chris was the perfect host. He just showed us around but at our pace, if we wanted to stop and look at something, there was no trouble. He would stand there with us while we looked at it. Is this you? Yeah. How old were you? 18. Oh my goodness. Good Just a baby. Yeah. No grey hair. Still good looking. What are you talking about? <laughs> the exhibits he has in there and their importance and their significance is absolutely amazing. I mean, we're standing there looking at a cricket bat that was played with in a game of cricket at Tobruk. You know, the rats at Tobruk, one of the most famous battles that Australian soldiers have ever taken place in. And that was the cricket bat, the army issue cricket bat. And not only that, the members of the team had signed the bat. Not just a museum, there are memorials to Australian servicemen and women throughout the property. This is the propeller off an Orion from Edinburgh Air Base. Um, and then on the far side, you've got the anchor off the Derwent which went to Vietnam with us and Malaya and Borneo, so that is the memorial to them. 
For those that want to spend more time exploring, there's accommodation for overnight stays. A patriot of Australia, I don't think there's a bigger one than Chris. Chris has got a beautiful big heart and he offers up the accommodation to returning soldiers so they can just take their time before they get back out into the world. Well, Chris, thank you very much for that. It was an amazing tour. You've done an incredible job. Thank if the people at home want to come out and see you, how do they find out about you? Well, the main way is, of course, going through the local tourist associations and on the internet. Uh, you can pick me up in the website there. After meeting Chris, I really feel like I've had a win. And if you want to have a win too, check out our competitions on the Woodoo website or on the show, just like this one. Time is running out for you to change your luck for the better because the good people at Nova Caravans want to give away this Bravo Caravan worth over $59,000, so get your entries in. The Bravo's got a queen-size bed, a full ensuite, 22-inch TV, all backed up with a three-year warranty. What more could you possibly want to be able to get off the grid in style? What's that? You want more? Well, I'm not going to give you steak knives, but I'll tell you what I will give you. I'll give you a single axle, I'll give you a front boot and a tunnel boot, and anything that you can poke your stick at. If you want your life's luxuries to never end, get online at whatsupdownunder.com.au and get your entry in. Now remember, you can only enter once every day, but you can enter every day. So get online and get in the running now to make the Bravo yours. And remember that it's at Nova Caravans where life's luxuries never end. Thank you very much, looks good. We love it when our What's Up Down Under viewers get a bargain. And that's why we have our Wudu Travel Saver card. Now's the time to join, because during our Spring Saver sale, get 20% off the membership fee and start using your card to save hundreds on caravan and camping products, accessories and services. The Wudu Travel Saver card is accepted all over Australia and New Zealand, where you save on all types of accommodation and spas, theme parks and tourist attractions, car hire and restaurants. Even when you're not travelling, you continue to save. With over 6,000 participating businesses, your Wudu Travel Saver card gets you discount at the supermarket, movie theatres and petrol stations as well. Making this an everyday saver card. To get 20% off during the Spring Saver sale, just go to whatsupdownunder.com.au and follow the links to the Travel Saver card. Sign up before November 30 and you'll receive seven issues of the What's Up Down Under magazine as our gift. Now that's a bargain that's hard to refuse. Coming up after the break, Angie attempts to convert me into a country gentleman. And we wrap up our season with our new friends from Port Vincent. What's up down under? To celebrate their 70th birthday, Teb's Canvas is giving you a chance to win a $2,100 voucher and other great prizes. Enter today. It's easy. Just go to whatsupdownunder.com.au, go to the competitions page and follow the prompts. Don't miss the Bendigo Leisure Fest from the 18th to the 20th of November at the Bendigo Racecourse. Find out more, just go to leisurefest.com.au. South Australia is known for its incredible wines, but the York Peninsula in particular only has four wineries and we just happen to be at the biggest. We've discovered some awesome seafood while we've been here and it just seemed the right thing to do to find something to wash it down. So it's been great to find you here today. And your cellar door, what a setup. It's a little different to most. Uh, we often get people coming in and they walk in and see a shed and they say, wow, you know, I never expected to see this on your peninsula. And it's got a big stage and everything. It looks like it's set for some big parties, Lyle. As we often say, we don't do tastings, we do journeys. So it often takes an hour for somebody to sit down and just have a bit of a chat and got great staff that the girls look after people and they go away pretty happy. So York Peninsula, as you said, it's not really known for its wine. What inspired this? A bit of research shows that back in the a couple of 1800s or something like that, there was actually quite a few uh, potentially commercial vineyards on York Peninsula, but the climate we have here is, a, is often said as being the Coonawarra without the water. So would that give your wine a distinct flavour? People often comment and remark that the wine has quite different sort of flavours to what they would expect normally. 
people who drink Chardonnay uh, or don't drink Chardonnay come in and say, oh, we don't drink Chardonnay, and often we've uh, got people that are converts by the time they leave. Well, I actually don't drink any of them, so I'd like you to try and convert me today if you could, mate. Well, definitely have a go, mate. <laughs> it's not going to be too hard, Lyle, I promise you. <laughs> so he headed into Lyle's shed to see if he could convert me into the wine culture. You can see Lyle's a man from the area. He's passionate about the area. He's passionate about wine. He knows his stuff and he made us feel really comfortable. He's just letting us be ourselves and enjoy the experience. And I found him really, it was like an educational experience for me. Well, I certainly didn't need converting. Barley Stacks wines are absolutely delicious. Now, Maker seem to be having a good time, but seem to have lost him along the way. Who knows? Well, Lyle got me to try them all, and he converted me. I'll see you back at the park. Well, sadly, we've come to the end of our incredible journey around the York Peninsula, and it's all been made possible from our great friends at the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia. We've also got to send a big thanks out to the good folks at the Port Vincent Foreshore Caravan Park for hosting us while we've been here, as well as all the association members that have joined us for the journey. But you guys make sure you come back next time as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. That's it for 2016, but you can still stay in touch at whatsupdownunder.com.au or on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And we're back on air in January 2017 with six new episodes and a mission to raise much-needed funds for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. See you then. What's up down under?